All right, so in this last video, when talking about the standard deviation, I just want to give you a few conceptual examples that would get at your understanding of what standard deviation actually is. So the instructions are to pick six data values between 1 and 10, inclusive, to make the following standard deviations. So let's start with, let's start with trying to make a standard deviation of 0. Now, how would you make your data values have a standard deviation of 0? Well, remember, the standard deviation is the average distance a data, the data values are from the mean. Okay, it's the average distance the data values are from the mean. So in order to make the standard deviation 0, we're saying the average distance from the data values in the mean is 0. And that only happens if all six numbers are the same. So just pick your favorite number between 1 and 10 and write it down six times. Okay, so again, why is that? Because if the mean, let me zoom in on this so we can get a good, good sentence here. So the reason that'll work is because if your six numbers are the same, that means your average is the same. And therefore, all the data values are zero from the mean. So the standard deviation is zero. All right. How about um, how about if we wanted to make the standard deviation as big as possible? Well, what that means is we want our data values to be as far apart from the mean as possible. Now the mean is the center. So if we just imagine taking our six data values and pushing, you know, pushing three of them to the side and the other three to the other side as far as they can go, that would push three of them to one and the other three to ten. So the only way to do this is to get three of those values to be one and the other three to be ten. Okay, because your mean will be right in the middle. And you really can't get any farther from the center than 1 and 10 because we can only pick numbers between 1 and 10 inclusive. Okay, so that's how you'd make your standard deviation as big as possible. So I'm going to write for the y. Let's say this is the most spread out we can make the data given the restrictions. given the fact that we can only use numbers from 1 to 10 inclusive. Okay, well, let's see. Let's do, um, let's make the standard deviation the smallest positive number. The smallest positive number. Now, I notice I didn't say the smallest possible because the smallest possible is we took care of that. The zero is the smallest it can be. And that would be if all the numbers are the same. The smallest positive number really just means we're going to look at, we're going to start with a standard deviation of zero and maybe just tweak one of those numbers a little bit and make it, make it a little bit, um, make it just somewhat different. So what I mean by that is let's start with five of the same number. So there's five fours. Now if I put down another four, the standard deviation would be zero for reasons we've seen. So let's just make let's just make uh, that four become a that last four become a five. Now the standard deviation is positive because the average is going to be somewhere in between four and five, really close to four, most likely, because there's more fours than there is that there are more fours than fives. Um, but the standard deviation is going to be not zero because they're not all the same, so there's going to be a small positive distance that represents our 
uh, our average distance from the mean. And really, we can't do any better than this because we can't pick, I mean, I guess it said pick data values. I probably should have indicated they need to be whole numbers. That's actually important. So um, again, let me just indicate that. Data values, um, whole number data values. Okay, so that, I mean, otherwise we could do 4.1 or 4.001. So this matters. Um, so, so what explanation do we give as why we know that this is going to give, and there are many examples. You could do four, five ones and then a two, or you could do five fours and a three. All of those should produce the smallest positive standard deviation. This isn't this, the only example. But I'm just going to indicate that this standard deviation Uh, it's not zero. Not all the data values are the same. So, but it would be if that uh, five were a four. Okay. By increasing the 4 to a 5, we increase the spread the spread of the data by a tiny amount. Okay, but that's, I mean, that, and that's the smallest amount we can increase the spread. Okay, so you can see that these are just some conceptual exercises on standard deviation. The last one I'll do, it would be pick six data values between one and 10 inclusive by making the and make it so that the standard deviation is negative. So you should reflect on what this would mean. It would mean that the average distance of the data values from the mean is a negative number, but that's not possible. Because, because first of all, when you look at the standard deviation calculation, as we've seen, you square the distances, and when you square things, you turn all negatives, you square, all, you turn all those deviations from negative to positive, and then when you square root, they remain. You square root the uh, the sum. Um, it remains positive. I'm um, sorry, when you square root the average of those square deviations, but the point is. First of all, standard deviation is always a positive number. The smallest it can be is zero. And based on the calculation, because we're squaring, you can never get a negative standard deviation. So this is impossible. Let me try to summarize what I just sort of mumbled there. Okay, since the standard deviation average of the squared since so the standard deviation is the it's technically the square root of the average but we'll just stick with this since the standard deviation is the average of the squared deviations from the mean it will always be positive or zero. Okay, so that wraps up a good conceptual exercise about standard deviation. Hopefully you understand a little bit more about what we mean when we use that term. And in the long run, what's important is that, you know, if I say the average, you know, the average SAT score for a a graduating class was 600 with a standard deviation of 10 and in another school it was 600 with a standard deviation of 40 that should give you some sense about how the scores varied between those two those two schools they varied more in the second than they did in the first because the standard deviation is bigger and that wraps up our discussion of standard deviation an important measure of spread